This is lesson 7-3, and it's finding common factors and greatest common factor. Our objective today is you, the students, will be able to find the greatest common factor of a set of numbers, and I'm going to show you two different ways of doing it. One of the ways uh, I think is better than the other, so um, I'm going to suggest doing one of them over the other, but, you know, you can choose. Uh, in order to succeed in this lesson, you're going to need to know two things. Number one, prime factorization, that comes from Lesson 7-2, and divisibility and factoring, that comes from Lesson 7-1. If you're at all unclear about either one of those two things, please go back and review that before continuing with this lesson. All right, here, here are our notes for uh, Lesson 7-3, uh, and it's pretty simple. How do, you, uh, how do I find greatest common factor of a set of numbers? Um, and again, for you, you're going to be, you know, writing in uh, the notes when you learn it or after you learn it, but your notes need to be on the page that you're working on so that we can uh, save that for study later. Here are our two methods for finding greatest common factor. One is to make a list and check it twice. Uh, and the other is prime factorization. The one that I'm going to do mostly today is prime factorization. I think it's um, the neatest and uh, requires a um, little bit more space but less overall work. And uh, it prevents common mistakes that you get when you're doing listing. All right, so I'm going to show you how to find the greatest common factor for the numbers 12 and 18 through um, listing and then through prime factorization. Let me make sure I have the right <coughs> pen. Okay, so finding the greatest common factor of 12 and 18 when you're making a list, you write down the 12, put a colon, and then write down the 18 right below it, colon. And now what we're going to do is make a list of factors because remember, we find the greatest common factor. Uh, and so we're going to list out all the factors of 12, all the factors of 18, and then find the ones that they have in common, and then find the one they have in common that is the greatest. All right, so listing out all the factors of 12, you have 1 and 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4. Make sure that if you're doing listing, you list every factor. Sometimes there's some factors that are not on the multiplication chart that you have to go through and do some problem solving for. In this case, all of these um, factors of 12 are on our multiplication chart, uh, and so those should be in your brain. Factors for 18. 1 times 18, 2 times 9, 3 times 6, and that's it. All right, and then um, once you have your factors listed, uh, you're going to just circle the ones that both lists have in common. Sometimes it's kind of hard to see them, but 6 and 6 are there, and so they make kind of a weird loop. And at that point, you... Um, can just judge for yourself. One is in common, two is in common, three is in common, and six is in common. So the one that is the greatest out of all those is six. So our answer to finding the greatest common factor of 12 and 18 is six. We're going to get the same answer through prime factorization. Uh, and you'll see it takes up a slightly more space, but uh, you have to write a little bit less factors. So uh, I prefer this one. It's also a little bit neater. All right, so prime factorization, we did that uh, in the previous lesson, so we're going to find the prime factorization of 12 and the prime factorization of 18, and then we're going to be listing those prime factors below. Just like we did over here, except we're not going to list out all the factors, just the prime factors, and I'll show you that it's pretty simple at that point to find the greatest common factor. All right, so let's factorize 12 here, so it's... 2 times 6. 2 is a prime number, circled, and then the uh, 6 is 2 times 3. Both prime factors, circled, making a, our number sentence down here, uh, 2 times 2 times 3. 
in this situation, you um, don't have to use exponents. You don't have to take that next step and turn them into exponential notation. Just leave them as their uh, common factors or prime factors. For 18, you have 2 times 9. 2's prime factor, circle it, and then you have 3 times 3 for the 9. Listing out those factors, 2 times 3 times 3. Now, just as you did in making a list, you identify the factors that you have in common. So they have the prime factor of 2 in common and the prime factor of 3 in common. There's another 3, but uh, you're only getting pairs here. So uh, even though uh, there's two 3s and one 3 down there, they still have that in common, but you only use one of the pairs from each of the lists. All right, at that point, you can list your um, prime factors, 2 and 3. And since these are factors, and factors are numbers that are multiplied, they need to be multiplied together. So once you have your prime factors you have in common, you multiply them together to get your greatest common factor. So 2 times 3 is 6. That is the greatest common factor. All right, so we got the same answer from two different methods. I prefer the prime factorization method. If you want to do listing, that's up to you. Um, I would, uh, the only suggestion I have for that one is make sure that you have all of the factors listed. Some of them are, you know, you have to do a little bit of problem solving to find. All right, moving on to some uh, examples. <coughs> Guided practice number one, we're going to find the greatest common factor of 10 and 12. All right, I'm going to start with 10 and 12, and we're going to do prime factorization method. So again, 2 times 5, both of those prime factors. Listing down below, 10 has prime factors of 2 times 5. For 12, hey, we already did that one as an example, but well, let's do it again. 2 times 6, and then 2 times 3. So for the 12, we have 2 times 2 times 3. So which one do they have in common? You circle the, the pairs. Oh, excuse me. Here we go. <clears throat> and that's the only one they have in common. So what is the greatest common factor? It is 2. Well, they only have the 2 in common. That is the greatest common factor. All right, so um, making a list for these would have been really easy. When the numbers are small, making a list is fine. All right, it's also fine for... Um, larger numbers, but you have to know uh, your divisibility rules in order to do that. Now, moving on to number two, finding the greatest common factor of 7 and 15. All right, 7 is a prime number, so that only has two factors. That is 1 and 7. Fifteen has 3 times 5. Those are prime factors. Uh oh, they don't have anything in common. The 7, the 3, the 1, the 5, nothing's in common. All right, so when you have no factors in common, you always have a times 1 on here. So anytime you have nothing in common, the greatest common factor is going to be 1. It's kind of a weird thing. That's the only drawback to uh, doing it with prime factorization is that sometimes they don't have anything in common. Some students are going to go, well, the greatest common factor is zero. Well, zero is not a factor of any number because zero is only a factor of zero. So uh, when you have that situation, just make sure that you realize that there's a one in there somewhere. You can multiply anything by one and have it be uh, the same. It's called the identity property. And so always greatest common factor is 1 if they share no other factors. So please uh, make a note of that and keep that in mind. All right, how about a couple more examples? How about finding the greatest common factor of 15 and 20? And again, I'm going to show you prime factorization, uh, and that's the one I prefer, so I'm going to continue to show you that one. So here's uh, the number 15 and 
the number 20 and again this these things take up a lot of space they're not a lot of work they just take up a lot of space and um, you know we have some paper so use it up uh, 3 times 5 is our factors for 15 both are prime numbers and so we list it below there's the, the number 15 and our two prime factors for 20 we have uh, 4 times 5 5 is a prime factor circle that and then 2 times 2 for the number 4 and so our factors are 2 times 2 times 5 so which one do they have in common they have the 5 in common so what is our greatest common factor it's 5 it's the only one they have in common they don't have the 3 in common the 2 in common nothing else uh, and so that becomes fairly simple greatest common factor is 5. Now sometimes you have to find the greatest common factor of a set of three numbers uh, and this can be quite messy when you're doing the listing because the um, you know the circles you have to find the common factors are uh, you know going to be all over the page so in this situation prime factorization works really well so we have 27 36 and 45 and we're going to find the prime factors for each. For 27, we have 3 as one of them, 9 as the other factor, and then 9 gets broken down into 3 times 3. And so our common factors here, 3 times 3 times 3. For the number 36, uh, 2 times 18. And again, you can use any factors here doesn't matter which ones so this is 3 times 6 and 2 times 3 in that situation we have 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 45 breaking that down into 9 times 5 and then 3 times 3 for the 9 and we have for 45, whoop, I almost uh, made the wrong thing there. For 45, colon, 3 times 3 times 5. Now, for common factors, you have to circle things that they, all three lists have. So all three lists have at least one 3. Let's find a th one 3 on each list. Okay, there we go. Do all three lists have another three? There's one three, there's a three, there's a three. Yes, they all have two threes in common. How about three threes? That list has a three, but this list does not have another three, and this list does not have another three. So you can't use another three in your uh, greatest common factor finding. How about five? Does this list have a five? No, this list doesn't have a five. No, and so let's go for the two. This list has a two, but this list doesn't, and that list doesn't. So we have identified all of our common factors now, our prime factors, and they are three and three. So each list has two threes, and so that is uh, what you use, three times three, and that equals nine. So our greatest common factor is nine. There, there's your answer. I'll try that one more time. All right, moving on to what is our task today, or where are we going with all of this? Well, we are headed for simplifying fractions. That's our goal. Uh, next lesson is about simplifying fractions and we're going to use our greatest common factor uh, information in order to simplify fractions and I will show you that uh, next lesson. So what are some common mistakes? Incorrect factorization. Uh, I'm not going to go through an example that uh, you can look for examples of incorrect factorization on the uh, previous uh, lesson. <coughs> Just make sure that you're not adding. All right, that, that should make sense to uh, most people. Now, moving on to uh, what we're going to be doing, we're going to be watching, or excuse me, going to be doing H7-3, that's out of your homework, homework book, and we're only doing problems 1, 2, 3, and 4. So remember, be organized and neat, this is going to help you avoid some common mistakes, and good luck.